Welcome to the daily word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the first book of Kings, chapter twenty-one, verses seventeen to the end. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, "Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Nebob, where he has gone to take possession." You shall say to him, "Thus says the Lord, Have you killed, and also taken possession?" You shall say to him, "Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked up the blood of Nebob, dogs will also lick up your blood." Ahab said to Elijah, "Have you found me, O my enemy?" He answered, "I have found you." Because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord, I will bring disaster on you. I will consume you, and will cut off from Ahab every male, born or free, in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha son of Ahijah, because you have provoked me to anger. And have caused Israel to sin. Also concerning Jezebel, the Lord said, "The dogs shall eat Jezebel within the bounds of Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And any one of his who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat." Indeed, there was no one like Ahab. Who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He acted most abominably in going after idols, as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. When Ahab heard those words, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted. Lay in a sackcloth, and went about dejectedly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days, but in his son's days, I will bring the disasters on his house. This is the word of the Lord. The grapes of wrath and the fruit of repentance. The story of Naboth's vineyard provides us with a series of valuable spiritual and moral lessons about sin and repentance. God pronounces judgment upon Ahab. In today's passage, King Ahab runs out to see his new vineyard or veggie patch, which is Naboth's vineyard in Jezreel, gained for him by Queen Jezebel through betrayal, lies, and murder. But instead of grapes, he finds God waiting for him. Elijah confronts this wicked, brutal couple. He charges them with the crimes of murder and theft. Notice how God held Ahab responsible for the sin of his wife, as he was her husband and as king and as a beneficiary of her crime. This shows us that being tempted or blaming others are not valid excuses. God expects us to fulfill our leadership responsibilities. Elijah prophesies that in the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood. This was a startling prophecy for the king, and interestingly, the prophecy was not exactly fulfilled, because Ahab died in Samaria, and the dogs licked his blood there. Various explanations have been made, but because Ahab repented, God relented. And mitigated the judgment. Ahab's greeting to Elijah is telling, "Have you found me, O my enemy?" Though the king knew it not, Elijah was his best friend, and Jezebel his worst enemy. Sometimes we think our enemies are our friends, and vice versa. Elijah tells Ahab that he has sold himself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. This is a similar form of speech. 
uh, as in Romans 7.14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. There's a metaphor here. Without Christ, we are abandoned to the service of sin. Satan is our master, and we are his slave. God's judgment is stern. I will take away your posterity and cut off from Ahab every male in Israel. This was a severe judgment, especially against a king. A king's legacy was in his heirs succeeding him, and here God announced an end to the dynasty. Thus, ironically, Ahab never possessed the vineyard of Naboth. He held it, but that very fact became to him a torment. However fine the vintage, for him the grapes were poisonous. That which is gained by sin is never truly enjoyed or possessed. God's judgment includes the wicked queen as well. The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel, says the prophet. Her end would deliver ironic justice for Naboth and be deservedly shameful. Ahab's great wickedness. The scripture tells us there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Again, like Adam in Genesis 3.17, God holds husbands who follow their wives into sin to a special accountability. Spouses should set a good example and not lead each other into sin. In likening the sin of Ahab to the sin of the Amorites, God prepares the case for the future eviction of Israel from the promised land. Ongoing idolatry and sin lead to our eviction from the place of God's blessing. Ahab repents and God relents. When Ahab heard God's word, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on. For all his sin, Ahab understood that the judgment was also an opportunity to repent. However, if Ahab had not humbled himself at all, then the judgment would have come in his own day. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, even when our sin is great. We are invited to humble ourselves in prayer, repent, and seek God's mercy. However, Ahab's repentance was only superficial, arising from fear of judgment, not a true sense of his sin, nor a desire to amend his life. Nor is there the least sign of repentance, such as restoring the stolen land or rebuking his wife, but in the very next chapter, you find him returning to his former ways. True repentance must issue in a changed life and making amends for past sin. Three years later, Ahab was dead under God's judgment. God repays his temporary repentance with temporary deliverance. There is no record of Jezebel's humility or repentance and we can expect that God's judgment would come upon her as he said it would. This story shows us the character of a God who is both loving and just. By nature, the innocent does not need mercy, but Ahab was a great sinner, but he won mercy through humble repentance. The worst sinner should not disqualify himself from receiving God's mercy if that sinner could only approach God in humble repentance. Let us make a sincere inventory of our sins and humble ourselves in repentance before Jesus, our Savior, and our friend. Here is a reflection. What are the vineyards that you covet in your life? Have you truly repented and considered how to make amends for your past sin. Take time to do so now. How have you experienced the love and mercy of God? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your great compassion and mercy, which are new every morning. Grant us humble hearts and true repentance in word and deed, 
that we may attain to the heavenly garden with you through Christ our Lord. Amen.